Welcome, Eric Andreas, your Guitar Sage here for the July 2nd Guitar Show. It's been a hot minute. In fact, I think it's been about a month since our live, last live broadcast where we were in the old studio. So some of you may know that we're now in a new studio. We were in like a 200 square foot basement of my house. Uh, and uh, we've recently moved into a new facility in the heart of Franklin here. 1,800 square feet, <sighs> we can breathe, the boys are happy, we've got new cameras, we've got new lenses, we've got some new video and audio equipment, so you're probably going to notice some improvements with lighting and with quality and that sort of thing. We're always trying to up our quality for you guys so that you've got better angles, you've got better zooms, um, higher resolution, better audio, all the rest, right? We're obsessed with teaching you how to play guitar, and so I'm just so tickled, honestly, we all are. We're just walking around on a, in a high right here uh, because there's just so much potential here at the studio. We're gonna be having other guitar players come out, uh, a lot more guests for the shows, that sort of thing. So I'll go on and on about that uh, a, a little bit more later probably. Today, friends, is a little bit more of a scaled down version of the guitar show because number one, we don't have a guest. We're not doing any giveaways today. We're gonna be answering your questions in real time on Facebook and YouTube, Instagram's in the house as well. I've told them they need to go to Instagram or, or YouTube or Facebook to get their questions answered. So I'll be going for, well, depending on how many folks are in here and if you guys are active, uh, we'll probably go about an hour and a half today, okay? And, but before then, what uh, we're, we're also going to be doing is I'm gonna be talking to you about how to play guitar on vacation. Some of you say, what do you mean? You just bring a guitar and you play. I know, we know that one. But I'm saying, you know, if it's like a basic vacation where you're, you have limited space and what have you, but you still wanna be progressing forward on the guitar, how might you do that? So I'm gonna be talking about that here in just one moment, okay? But before that, friends, if you would, please, as a kindness to me, and for others, sharing is caring. Please go ahead and share this video right now, whether you're on Facebook or you're on Instagram or YouTube. In any way that you can share it, please go ahead and do that. Also, thumbs up and all that good stuff. Obviously, if you aren't subscribed, please do that. Okay, thank you so much for doing that. So let's talk about literally the things that you need that will help you to keep your hands moving on the guitar so the last two weeks we've been moving into the studio, right, all that good stuff, but a week before that I was on vacation. Now, this specific vacation, I was at a Tony Robbins conference and I was literally in a conference room for like 16 hours a day, so there wasn't much time to practice at all. It was sleep, conference, sleep, conference. So I didn't really get any guitar time, unfortunately. But I would sit there at the conference with my trusty grip master, right? I'm gonna be mentioning a few different products, not because they've you know, given me anything. Uh, they're just literally products that I use for such occasions, okay? And you might find these, I think the majority of these you can find in my kit store. There is the address for that, kit.com slash your guitar stage. So if I mention something, chances are it's in there. Obviously you can just go to Amazon as well, but uh, for, for quick reference, that's where you'll wanna go. Okay, cool. So let's go down the, the, the list in no particular order. Grip Master or Big Putty, Silly Putty, any, you know, you could use Play-Doh, but preferably something that doesn't try, dry out. That's why I prefer Silly Putty or what I call Big Putty, which you can get like in the dollar store and that sort of thing. It's just more of Silly Putty, right? It's something that you can sit there and massage. Now, why would you do that? Well, number one, when we're playing guitar, there's a couple things that we're trying to overcome, especially in the beginning. One is technique issues, right? That comes through practice, but then also strength. So if you're trying to play your bar chords and you got a lot of muted notes, me being off for as long as I've been and setting up the studio and everything else, I literally can feel that I've lost my chops. Not all of them, you just lose your ability to get in there and dig in and play because of technique and because of loss of, of muscle, okay? So not a lot of muscle that you're, you're needing there, but 
for the right things, you're needing to develop those. So a grip master, that's the name of this, it's a brand name, or this, this particular one's called a very grip, V-A-R-I-G-R-I-P, it's made by Planet Waves. There's another one called Grip Master, it's, I think it's another company. Lots of people have these sorts of things. Uh, spring loaded, basically the only thing I'm doing here is just keeping my hands moving strengthening those muscles like you would if you were playing guitar, especially bar chords and that sort of thing. So you could literally be sitting in a conference and doing this all day long, okay? Now, if you don't have one of these or you don't have the money for these, don't wanna go out and buy one, that sort of thing, you can also literally use a capo. Now, you have to be a little bit more creative with the capo. If it's a spring-loaded one, you can just sit there and literally with one finger just sit there and pinch, pinch that capo, you know? and use all the fingers, right? Your first finger, being so close to your thumb, is gonna be able to do a lot more on the guitar. If you've noticed this, you might say, oh, my pinky is so lazy. Yeah, welcome to the club. That's everybody on the planet Earth uh, because the pinky is so far away from the thumb, okay? So the, that pinky and that third finger, they need a little bit more help. So you literally, if you just did this, just take your capo and you just on that third and fourth finger. If you're not playing guitar, it's fantastic because when you do go to play guitar, you're gonna find that there's this feeling as if you've done some practicing. Obviously theory and licks and stuff like that aren't going to be there in the same way as if you're practicing the licks. But I'm talking about strength and just overall, you're moving those muscles, okay? Just that overall bit, you are going to feel a difference than not doing it at all, because I've done both, okay? So the grip master is one thing, just something to exercise. And you could literally could use anything. If you have nothing at all, you can just take your palm, put it, put it on your, your knee and squeeze. I mean, you don't need anything to do this. You just need to keep things moving, right? Another little bit that I'll do is on my phone, what I'll do, or some sort of pencil or anything, a pen, is I'll do little exercises as per the Dexterity exercise number one that's in the free course. You know, I mention this free course all the time, folks. The reason I do it is not because I make money on it, because I don't make any money on it. It's literally there for you for free because it's literally going to build a massive foundation for you. Yourguitarsage.com slash 30. You'll find a link for that in the description of the video, okay? Very important, that, that one. But exercise one, I talk about dexterity exercise number one, which is basically this on the guitar, right? One, two, three, four. You've done this one before on all the strings, right? It's just like a basic way to get your fingers moving. And then you can do other variations of that, you know? One, three, two, or one, three, four, two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four, two. And there's 24 variations of that, right? So that's a great one to do. Again, you don't have the guitar yet, so you could literally use a pen and just go one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four. Now you may say to yourself, that's crap, that's not on the guitar. It doesn't need to be on the guitar. We're literally just building synapses and myelin within the brain to actually do what it is that you need to do, okay? And, and oftentimes when you are not playing guitar but you're doing something like this, what happens is you have a different focus that happens. Uh, so you're not worried about licks. You're not just jamming out on songs that you that you know. You're literally doing something that normally if the guitar's in your hand, you may not be as focused on it. So you can find those 24 exercises that I'm talking about in the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. But literally what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your phone or a pen or something like that and you're gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. After that becomes easy. One, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four. And you can get faster at this, faster and faster. And really what you're looking for is accuracy, but with accuracy, the byproduct of that is speed, right? So that's something that you could use. Uh, a shred neck, if you've ever seen one of these before, this is called a shred neck. And it's not in tune. It will never be in tune, even though there's little tuners here. Those aren't really tuners, those are tighteners, just to keep the strings taut as they would be on the guitar. So you have the first, what, five or so, six or so frets of the guitar. This first fret here is scalloped out, so you don't hold it like this, you actually hold it like this. This first fret here is scalloped out so that you can use a pick and you can literally pick. And so what you might do here 
Now, it's gonna sound terrible. The point is not to sound good. If you want a guitar, go get a guitar, but this is not a guitar. Understand that. I, I, it drives me nuts when I see people, uh, when I do a review on something like this, and people say, well, that thing sounds like crap. It's because it ain't a guitar, right? It, it is a, just something. This uh, is a terrible guitar too, okay? And so is this, and so is my phone. But the point is, you're doing something. You're moving your hands, you're getting your, you know, you're doing some sort of pattern that your brain has to think about and you're creating a uh, near, neuron connection, right, with what's happening in your hands here. So, literally a shred neck will allow you to just play little exercises to where you can get your, your picking down, your synchronization. So this is kind of up and at a level to where you're not just talking about the, the fretting hand. And uh, these are about 50 bucks. I think we have these in the store, kit.com slash your guitar stage. So these are really cool. And I highly recommend them, especially if you are like on a plane or, you know, in a place where it wouldn't be inappropriate to have this, right? If I were sitting in a conference doing this while Tony's talking, someone's gonna stop me, right? Someone's gonna say, please don't do that. But you can play your chords, your forms, when I talk about the transitions and the nine essential chords, that's also in the free program, right? A lot of people say, well, Eric, I have a problem going from a C chord to an F chord. Okay, perfect. You know what the practice for that is? Going from a C chord to an F chord. So the easiest or the shortest distance from A to B, right, is a, is a straight line. So you want to cut out all the crap that you don't need to do. So if you're playing a C chord and you can play an F chord and you're like, but Eric, I can do both of those, but it's going back and forth between them, then a great exercise would be transitioning, all right? I talk about this all the time. So playing your C chord, playing your F chord, playing your C chord, playing your F chord. I'm not needing a guitar to do this, right? I don't need to be strumming because that's one of the instructions I tell you when you're talking about transitions. If you just focus your energy and your, and your eyes and everything, into what it is that you're trying to do here with the left hand, there's not a need to strum yet, okay? This, this is, uh, goes to a, a lot of analogies that I talk about where if you're doing too many things at, at once, you're gonna bail out of guitar. Now this is more for beginners, right? So if you've been playing for a while, you're gonna wanna synchronize the, the right hand and stuff. But even if, you know, I do this all the time, I've been playing for over 30 years, but if I'm, um, I don't play a lot of jazz chords, but when I, when I get into that mode again of playing jazz or playing gypsy jazz or swing or something like that, I love swing, um, I, have to, I have to re go through my chords again, the ones that you use all the time, because I just don't play it that often. And when you, when you own a company and you're doing videos and what have you, you don't get to play for eight hours a day, right? So one way that I would do this, that I would use this still, 30 years later after playing guitar, is I would have my chords, the specific chords that I would be using for jazz that are gonna be a little bit more uh, challenging. And I'll switch in between certain chord formations. Gr uh, shred neck, okay? I don't know, there may be other folks that have, you know, something similar here, but that's the shred neck, super cool. Right, the next bit, uh, actually let's get, let's go back, let's get, even get smaller. <laughs> what I mean by that is, let's get more portable. So one thing that I mention to folks all the time is when you're just starting off playing guitar, the pick seems very foreign, right? It just does. It's, you weren't born with it and it just feels weird. So a lot of folks are like, man, can I just play with my, thumb or my first finger. Can I just do that? Sure, you can do that. You can also not shower. You can also eat crap food all the time, but why would you wanna do that, right? So let's do, let's up our, our level here and let's do the right thing. Let's learn how to use a pick. If you wanna not use a pick because you're great at finger picking or you're playing classical guitar or something like that, good for you, that's awesome. But can you play with a pick? Is the reason for you not using a pick because you don't desire to use a pick or it's because you really can't because you feel uncomfortable with it. Chances are it's that you feel uncomfortable with it because a pick makes the guitar sound so much better when you're playing that type of music that deserves a pick, right? Rock music, blues, that sort of thing. Doesn't mean that you can't just use your fingers. There's a lot of great players who have. Not a lot, there's a few who have. But for the most part, you wanna use a pick. You wanna get used to using your pick. So, literally carrying the pick around with you everywhere is something very handy, right? My little boy, he's three years old. When he's eating with the, with the fork, you know, he's grabbing the fork like this. 
you know? And it's because he's not used to holding the fork like this. Well, let me ask you, does he need to be eating food to hold that fork the right way in his hands in order to get used to it? No, literally, if he walked around the house, not that I'm having him do this, but if he walked around the house with the fork the right way, the proper way that we do it, right? The proper way, then he's gonna get used to that feeling. Or a pencil, if you've never, you know, kids write like this, right? They're trying not to lose that pencil. So if you put it the right way, the correct way in their hands, they feel, it feels weird. But they don't necessarily have to be writing to be using the pencil to get the feel of that. Same thing with the pick. You don't have to be playing guitar to get the feel of the pick. You just need to have it in your hand. Um, you can literally just sit there on the seam of your pant. I know these sound like really elementary bits and pieces, but I promise you they're very helpful. Again, we can up it with things like the shred neck and what have you. Um, a buddy of mine went to Spain and studied flamenco guitar and he was just obsessed with it. And he said that the guys there would walk around with something similar to a shred neck. It was smaller, it was about that big, and they'd put it on their belt and they would practice their uh, rasqueado, I think it's called, rasqueada. Uh, they would practice that, you know, bum, 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 bum. They'd practice these strumming rhythms because that alone is a technique that takes, I don't know, hundreds of hours maybe? At least, at least dozens and dozens of hours. So why do you need to have a guitar, right? These are pro players, amazing players. They don't need a guitar, they just, they're just working on that right hand. Again, they're focusing on just what's happening here. This is what happens a lot of times is people try to put it all together at once and they're having issues and they wonder why, because they're trying to put too much together at once, okay? <clears throat> all right, so a, some sort of travel guitar. I have a baby Taylor, which is just a you know, very small guitar like this. I've got a, uh, a, a, I don't know what it's called. It's a baby Martin, but uh, similarly, right? It's just, this, just about the smallest scale you can get. I think it's quarter, quarter size. Uh, doesn't mean it's quarter size of the guitar though. It's just smaller, okay? And uh, that would be a great utility to use if you want to up it, you know, if we're, we're trying to get into actually playing the guitar. Also a gutulele, right? It's G-U-I-T-E-L-E. -E. So it's basically a guitar that is tuned or, yes, yeah, tuned up. If you were to capo here at the fifth fret, that would be a gutulele. And essentially the body is much smaller. The headstock would be about here. And so imagine a much smaller guitar body the headstock's right here, that saves you a ton of room, right, if you're on an airplane or whatever. And you literally can play anything on the guitar on a gutulele, tuned similar to, it's, it's, it's if a, a guitar and a ukulele had a baby, it'd have a gutulele, right? And they're really cool, I have them, I have one, it's about a hundred bucks, Yamaha makes one, and I think they might have been the first folks to, to come out with that. I don't, in fact, they're the only folks that I've seen with it. So any sort of travel guitar, I also have an electric travel guitar. I also have a Steinberger guitar, which if you don't know what that is, S-T-E-I-N-B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E I believe that's, that's correct, the way I'm spelling that. It has no headstock, you tune it on the body. So literally a full-size guitar is about <clears throat> this big. It's literally that big. Okay, so all this is cut off and all this is cut off. The tuners are down here and the body is super small. It's about like this, okay? And I got it specifically for travel, okay? So I would have a legit guitar that I could use that sounded good. All right, so that's as far as, um, you know, something to noodle with. Now, <clears throat> if you wanna up it as far as sound, you want to, there's a, a million apps out there that you could get, so you'll want to make sure that you get some sort of app, like the Line 6 app, or any sort of guitar amplifier, if you just search guitar amplifier in your store, you're going to find exactly what I'm talking about. Now, what that is, is it's a synthetic or a digital manufacturing of a guitar amp, okay? You probably are doing this already with your amplifier if you have like a Viper or a, um, 
uh, katana or some sort of digital amp that has effects and stuff like that built into it. It's just in this case here, it's a much smaller speaker, right? And it's built into an app within your phone instead of an app that's actually in your amplifier, okay? So something like that's really handy, but you also need what's called a guitar interface. So something that you could take a plug and plug it into your guitar, and then the cable comes into your interface, because you're not gonna be able to plug a guitar into your phone, and it also needs to convert analog into digital. You don't need to know what that means, but basically it's gonna take your guitar signal and it's gonna make it such that your phone knows what to do with it and then you're putting on your headphones and everything and you can hear what it is that you're playing. So pretty cool. You literally have a travel guitar, like a little electric, like a Steinberger, plug that straight into your interface, into your phone, and you have a whole setup. You could jam out with jam tracks, like inside our 600 something jam tracks that we have inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. You literally could be could be jamming out, listening to blues tracks with your headphones, not bothering anybody, playing guitar on the road, on a plane, that sort of thing, okay? A lot of this stuff, again, is in the kit store. So if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're gonna have to delve in, delve down a little bit further, but kit.com slash your guitar stage. And obviously I'm gonna get your questions here in a minute so we can get into that, okay? There's the, the link for you. DJ2 or DJ Pro are just two programs that I absolutely love. Uh, I'm sure they're available on Android slash Windows, but I know they're available for sure on Apple products because I have them on my phone, on my, on my iPad, and on my computer. DJ, like D-J-A-Y-2, numeral, numeral two, or DJ Pro, I believe, on the laptop. And what this allows me to do <clears throat> is literally stream music from Spotify, or I can use, uh, is it iMusic or whatever Apple Music is, you literally can, you can download those, those you need to download, and then you can drop them into this program, you can slow them down, you can speed them up, you can change the pitch of the song, and when you slow it down, you can either change the pitch or not change the pitch, so that's amazing. A lot of the stuff that I teach, the real fast stuff, the Van Halen and that sort of stuff, I'm literally using this program to decipher that. I'm to slow it way down, and then I'm using music theory and common sense and um, my ear and those sorts of things. But very, very helpful for jamming because you can loop certain sections of songs if you want to, and you can jam over Zeppelin instead of, say, some random jam track that you find on YouTube. So pretty cool. That's DJ2, DJ Pro. That's probably not in our store, I don't think. Okay. And the last thing is going to be working on music theory, knowledge, fret, and, and this is, would be like using fretboard diagrams <clears throat> and or chord diagrams and that sort of thing. So for instance, and you can get all this stuff for free inside the free course that I'm constantly telling you about, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Mike, if we have a, a link for that, throw that up if you would. If not, that's all right. If not, it's probably in the description of this video. Awesome, thank you, brother. Um, so, <clears throat> so, you know, I think about guitar, I think about left hand, I think about right hand, I think about music theory. You almost can break everything down into that, right? You're fretting, you're picking in some way, either using the pick or using your fingers, and then your knowledge, like what are you doing? <clears throat> whether that's your repertoire, whether that's your chord vocabulary, your scale vocabulary, whatever it may be, you got stuff that you got to learn, and the more stuff you know that you have at your disposal, well, then the more powerful you're going to be in your craft, right? So, super important to sharpen that. And a great way to do that is away from the guitar, because, you know, we're constantly distracted by things, right? And I mentioned to you earlier, if we're just focusing on the left hand, or just the right hand, or just music theory, nothing else is distracting us. So if you're playing something and you're like, oh dude, that sounds like Stairway, and then you start playing Stairway, well now you're distracted instead of drilling down and doing what, what we call deep work, which is focused practice, okay? Really focused practice. And so one way that you can do this is with chord diagrams I, or, or fretboard diagrams inside the free course. I have those for you. Download those, print them up, or just have them on your computer and you can, you can manipulate them there, but essentially, what you want to do is, as you discover a chord, or as you discover a scale, or a new pattern or something that I'm telling you about, or another teacher's telling you about, you can write it down and you can keep up with it. Another thing that I'll do is I'll, 
I, I used to do this more, I don't really anymore because I have a broader understanding of the fretboard, but I might say, okay, if I took this chord here that's on the bottom three strings, how would I convert that to the next three strings? Or, okay, I have this lick here on strings six and five, how would I convert that to strings five and four, and then three and two, and then two and one, that sort of thing. So this is where you, it's, things start getting mathy, and you may say to yourself, ah, oh, no, 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 that stuff scares me. If it does, and you just said that, or you have like a little kind of welling up inside of you, like, wow, that's over my head, that is more reason why you need to be doing this, okay? I say this all the time, when you find something like that that you're like, ah, I don't know, it's outside your comfort zone, run into the light, my friend. That's what you want to do. You want to run towards that stuff because that's the stuff that's going to make you a better player, not the same riffs that you've been playing all the time, right? Okay, uh, enough with the preaching, but that is how you want to practice on vacation. Obviously, you need a little time if you're in a conference room with Tony Robbins for 16 hours you're still not going to be practicing. The best I could do is, is bring this and sit there and, or do some diagrams, but that would be rude, wouldn't it? Okay, so that's about it there in, in regards to how to practice guitar while on vacation. All right, let's get to some questions, shall we? Do you guys notice how crisp and clear these, uh, these cameras are? I'm so excited. Super cool stuff. I'm going to start on Facebook today. Instagram, I'm going to get to questions, but I'm not going to get to them on Instagram. So if you're typing on there, I'm sorry. Facebook and YouTube, I can't see the screen. It's so tiny. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, live streams are back. They are, Ryan, at least for today. We're still doing some other stuff, and we're going to be taking a couple other weeks off here. Not off. I'm going to be doing other stuff. But today we're here, and I believe next week we're here as well. Okay, let's look for some questions. If you would, friends, because there's so many folks in these broadcasts, please, all caps with a question mark. That'll help, okay? So, woo, okay. Um, nothing matters, but I started reflecting inward and thinking, what have I done wrong? Okay, I think he's talking about something different here, not guitar. Okay. Oh, I'm going to mind you if you're typing on here, Ryan. I'm going to mind you. So again, if it's for me, all caps, question mark, okay? All right. Okay, but I don't have room for you to sleep in. Do you mind sleeping next to my riding lawnmower? I don't think that's probably for me. Um, okay, so Larry's going on vacation, beautiful. So these are things, seriously. It's like, where there's a will, there's a way. If you're focused on getting better at the guitar and you have any time whatsoever, do it. When I'm sitting there watching shows in the evening with my wife, it's our bonding time, so we watch shows sometimes, uh, then <clears throat> I'll literally have my guitar there the whole time. And I may be just doing a particular exercise or playing a scale or playing a riff or playing a certain chord combination constantly. Why? Because if I'm sitting there with her for an hour, watching some mindless program, or maybe it's a, maybe it's a good program, but I'm, if I'm sitting there watching some program, I can have the guitar in my hands and I can be noodling. You should be too. There's absolutely no excuse for it. Uh, unless you just want to be, you want to suck, then that's a perfectly good excuse to, to not do it. All right. Not everybody wants to be good. There's, there's some folks that are totally fine with mediocrity, right? Okay if that's okay for you. Okay. Reserve those question marks for questions from me if you would, my friends. I have a question. I'm planning on visiting Nashville for a week or so, and I'd be very honored if you would sign my acoustic guitar. It's, it's the very first guitar, and you are the one who has helped me learn what I have learned. Anyhow, I'd love for you to sign it if possible. Thank you. Donnie, oh, beautiful. That's so kind of you. Donnie, yeah, just um, email me at eric at yourguitarsage.com and we'll figure out how we can how we can do that maybe you can come by the studio or something like that okay great done with questions on facebook let's head over to youtube <coughs> instagram folks you know where to go all right i'm starting all the way at the bottom of the list so if you uh, and then i'll work my way up and then back again okay what strings do you recommend for a beginner acoustic it doesn't matter beginner advanced or what type of acoustic most strings are very similar other than the gauge, okay? The gauge of the strings, 
matters. Uh, real light strings on an acoustic will typically cause intonation problems uh, and it just won't sound as big. So, I mean, Diderios work, elixirs work. There's no best, there's just strings, okay? Some people may argue with that, but honestly, I would love to challenge them on that and uh, do a blind test with the strings that they believe are so vibrant. I'm sure there's a, I'm sure like Eric Johnson or, you know, Guthrie Trap or Josh Smith or somebody like that, some player who is just living and breathing and drinking their guitar all the time, they might be able to hear a difference between strings. I would love to have somebody like that in here to see if that's even possible because I hear so much people going on about this string or that string or the other and and I question it because I've, I've played all the different strings and that's not to me what is rising to the top. It's like what pickup I'm using, what amp I'm using, those sorts of things. There's things that are so much more uh, dependent on your sound than the actual strings. Now, old strings, new strings? Yes, definitely. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, have you ever biased your tube amps and why? Larry, mm, no, absolutely not. Me personally, I try to stay away from that minutia. Uh, you know, those details are things that I don't like to do because my life is very, very busy now and I like to focus on things like making videos and going live and that sort of thing. So. Uh, me specifically, I haven't, if you want to get into that, I think it's a great idea to know that, those sorts of bits and pieces about your amp. I think that's great. If you have the time, if it's taken away from your practice time, uh, then, which obviously it's time, it's going to take away some, I'd say don't do it. I'd rather see you playing because at the end of the day, I don't care if Eddie Van Halen can bias his own amps. I don't care. I want him to play well, right? So, and I try to carry that into everything that I do. Um, I try to carry, I don't mow my own lawn because my lawn guy does it way better than me and way cheaper and way shorter amount of time. So he gets to do my lawn and I get to pay him. Uh, so that's just me personally. I try to focus on the things that I feel I'm most effective and good at and I try to take everything else that I'm not good at or I don't want to do and hire somebody else to do that if I can uh, just because they're gonna probably be better at it, right? So Greg Ellis, my guitar tech, is gonna buy us an amp way better than I would. All right, how do you take care of a guitar during the summer? Is there anything one should be careful about? Yeah, sure. I would say you wanna treat your instrument like you would your child, right? Or your pet. You're not gonna leave your pet out in the car unless you're an a-hole, right? Don't keep your pet out in the car. Don't keep your kid out in the car. Don't keep your guitar out in the car. It's hot. It's going to warp. It's made of wood. So extreme heat, extreme cold, extreme humidity, high or low will cause problems. So if you're comfortable, your guitar is comfortable, chances are, uh, with the exception of humidity maybe because you may not be able to feel that. A good range is somewhere between like 45 and 65, and that's being liberal on both sides a little bit. 55 is kind of your, your, your sweet spot from what I understand, and you can use humidifiers, dehumidifiers, and hydrometers. to So a humidifier to humidify the air, dehumidify to dehumidify the air to pull the air out, uh, the humidity out, say like in Florida or in the swamp or something like that and uh, a hydrometer to tell you what that range is and to alert you should there be a problem, okay? Very important, I've seen guitars literally split, specifically acoustic guitars, I've seen them split, I've seen the bridge rip straight up off of, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollar guitars because someone just didn't do right by that guitar. Kept it up in the attic or whatever. Okay. What's the best way to travel with a guitar on a plane? Do you check your guitars? So me personally, I check my guitars. I mean, I don't check my guitars. I bring them with me. So typically that means I can't bring my jumbo with me. Plus I, I typically wouldn't travel with my jumbo, with my, uh, with my Gibson, because it just doesn't fit. Then I have to check it and, you know, I have, there's lots of stories out there about folks who have checked their guitars and then the airline said, oh, we're sorry, we'll buy you a new whatever, uh, and it's some crap guitar, right? They don't care that it's vintage, anything else. So 
no, don't check your guitar unless that specific airline has some sort of clause or something that says, we're gonna pay for your guitar if we break it. Because if they break it, they're gonna say, it should have been a travel case, it should have been this, that, or the other thing. Don't do it, okay? So I don't. I travel with light guitars, cheaper guitars a lot of times. Uh, if, I, if it's a more expensive guitar, I'll bring it with me. You know, I'll, I'll try to stow it. I haven't been in the situation yet where I've had to travel with something that was too big or what have you, where I, where I had to check it. All right, <clears throat> Brett Papa moved to Nashville. Collaboration? Well, you know Brett, Brett and I are good buddies and we collaborate all the time, so indeed. Uh, I was hoping that he could be here today. Jeff Duke was gonna be here as well, but we, we, we said let's just fly solo today because we just have so much going on here. But literally, Brett lives, if I threw a rock, phew, I could probably hit his house. Now, nah, it's a little further than that, but he's probably, five minutes away from here, 10 minutes at the most, seven minutes. Uh, so yes, I'm planning, um, would love to have Brett here. He's a wealth of information and just an all around great guy. So definitely, yeah. Taking guitar in a soft case on vacation is uh, to, to dryer temperature smart to buy a humidifier for the case. I definitely would buy a humidifier for the case, just a little, you know, a little something or another to, to keep it damp inside. Uh, you can always take a sponge, wet it, Ring it out and then put it in your case as long as it's not dripping, it's not going to drip on your guitar. That's a, like the cheap man's way of doing it and, it and it works, works fine. Okay, do I keep guitars in a case or on the wall? Right now, a lot of them are in cases because we're in flux right now. So I got my studio back home and then I got my studio here. When I mean back home, I mean five minutes away from here. And so I keep a lot of those in cases right now, but it was nothing for me to have every single, just about every single one of my guitars, 30 of them or so, all over the house hanging up. There's no problem doing that, okay? If you go into the top guitar stores here in Nashville, you will find they're all hanging up, even the very expensive guitars. Okay, what's my opinion of carbon fiber guitars? I think they're great is in regards to being able to abuse them, you know, as far as heat, as far as cold, uh, as far as um, humidity, you know. So what carbon fiber is, my friends, is it's a synthetic, uh, I believe it's like a synthetic bonded guitar. They don't sound as open as wood, but you literally can bring them into the ocean with you, and besides your strings rusting, they're, they're, it's going to be fine, or any of the gears and that sort of thing. But the actual guitar itself can get wet. And they're, they're, they're fairly waterproof. Check your manual for that, okay? I'm not going to be responsible if you break a carbon fiber guitar that wasn't supposed to go in the water. But as I understand it, they're, they're fairly resistant to water. Okay, which modeler do you use the most? Helix, Axe FX, etc. Jason, I use a, a Kemper amp, that's, that's my love, Kemper amp. But I've used tons of Line 6 stuff, so the Helix I'm sure is amazing. Uh, my buddy Bart, who was on here just a few weeks ago, he swears by Axe FX. And honestly, you know, we're talking about software. So if you're familiar with apps, you know, once someone learns how to do something with an app and an algorithm and what have you, somebody else is going to do it too, and they're going to copy it, and they're going to hack it and everything else. So a lot of these are very similar. It's just like the interface is different. Maybe working around the menus is different. The reason why I love Kemper so much is because, well, I've used lots of Line 6 stuff, but man, the Kemper stuff to me is leaps and bounds above anything that I've played that was Line 6. But then again, I don't have the most recent Line 6 stuff as well. But as far as amps and stuff, now delays, reverbs, and stuff like that, most people can replicate those fairly simply. But I also like that the Camper has all those knobs on there. So if I want to just adjust my reverb, I can do it. If I want to adjust delay, I can do it. Modulation, there's so many knobs on that thing, I can immediately jump in and have some fun with it, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Luke, yeah, music music is when, yeah, I need to talk to this guy. There's so many folks to collaborate with and, and what have you, so typically, um, unless someone reaches out to me, I have a few folks that I reach out to, but for the most part, things are so busy right now that um, that, that. What was my first serious guitar? So the first serious guitar that I 
had was a, uh, this is going to sound funny that someone might not consider this as being a serious guitar, but for me it was very serious. It was a, it was a PV Razor. Now PV, if you remember from the 80s, they still make stuff, but they're, but they make great quality stuff for a cheap price. And I bought, a, or I, my dad bought me a PV Razor. It was $275 or $250 a Christmas of like two, uh, 1984, 85, something like that. And that was my first big boy guitar. After that, uh, I graduated to a Kramer Beretta, which was made famous by lots of heavy metal guitar players back in the day, like George Lynch and Jakey Lee, and I think Jake, Jake played one. Nonetheless, tons of, tons of guys played this. I uh, had a Floyd Rose single Jeff Beck pickup in it, and that was a little under $700. Bought that with my own money. Absolutely fell in love with that guitar, and that was my, my big, big boy guitar. Loved it. My first serious guitar, yeah. Okay, I need help understanding how to relate the pentatonic scales to song chords. So David, you typically don't relate the scales to chords. You relate a scale to a specific key. So yes, in theory, if you're playing jazz and that sort of thing, every chord that passes by, you could have a scale specifically for that. But chances are, especially the way that you ask that question, I don't think that you're probably at that level. You're probably wanting to learn how to use scales over chords. David, you need to have some knowledge, some music theory knowledge. So that's something that can't be answered in just, oh, well, here's what you need to do. But I can tell you where to go. Go to the free course, yourguitarsage.com 30. Get a basic understanding of how chords work together, how the family of chords work together, how to use the pentatonic scale, how to use the major scale. That's gonna get you where you wanna go, okay? I wish there was a pill that I could give you that would get you there, but it's, there is, is no such thing. So if you're serious about it, David, go there. YourGuitarSage.com slash 30. Link for that's in the description of this video. Okay, shortcut to learning, to joining learning the last three pentatonic boxes. There are There is no shortcut. It's called practice. That's what you gotta do. So just like you learned the first two, uh, J-Mac, you got to do that with the last three. And a good way to do it that makes it fun is to use some jam tracks. We got 600-ish, 600-plus-ish inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, so if you want to get to using those scales but you're bored, use them over jam tracks. I have some, some jam tracks for free on YouTube as well. But that will help you get familiar with that specific form instead of just like playing through it to actually use it, right? It's like you could have a hammer and you could sit there and like a kid, you could go and bang on stuff. Oh, there's a piece of wood, I'm gonna bang on that. But really, realistically, what you wanna do is get used to driving nails into that wood, right? So in the same way, just sitting there whittling away at a scale, nothing wrong with that. It's good to get used to using that hammer like a, like a child would, right? But eventually you need to learn how to use that scale and to, how to apply it to music. The sooner you do that, the sooner you're going to feel comfortable with that scale as it was meant to be used, not just running rep, you know, repetitively through it. Okay. Okay. What is the best way to remember chord progressions? Repetition? Uh, Johnny, yes, that is the best way to do it. Is repetition, uh, you know, feeling the song and going, okay, well, it's pulling to this E minor. Wow, that chord feels so dark compared to those other chords. Like just being observant. Right? So there's a difference between if you're sitting there talking with somebody and, and you're, you're hearing them but you're not listening, right? I mentioned this analogy yesterday in one of my private live classes that I do for the UGS folks. And if my wife's talking and I can hear her but I'm not listening, well then that's just, I might as well not be listening, right? In the same way when you're playing a chord progression, if you're just like mindlessly going through chords trying to memorize it, it's probably not gonna help you so much. But if you could feel the chord and be like, God, I love it when it goes to that chord. What is that chord? Okay, it's an E minor. I love that E minor chord. So like taking note of those sorts of things, that's gonna help you through association to be able to memorize chord progressions much better. You know, what's the scoop on the mushroom water? What is the, what is the Gibson LP in the Zeppelin vids? Uh, what's the scoop on mushroom water? So I'm constantly drinking superfoods and one of those superfoods is mushrooms. Uh, I have a mixture of 14 organic mushrooms like cordyceps and um, 
lion's mane and just all sorts of things. They've proven that that mushrooms are really good for things uh, like brain functionality, you know, uh, cognitive focus, all sorts of amazing things. Mm -hmm. Immune system building, and the more you take this, it's, a, it's a, an adaptive, what's called an adaptive herb, which if you don't know what that is, look it up, but basically adaptive herbs are things like uh, CBD, mushrooms, um, all, others, other bits and pieces but that do this as well. But basically an adaptive herb is when you take it, or adaptive food is when you take it, it goes and does what it needs to do in your body. So it has many, many different functions, but your body's going to use it in the capacity that it best needs it. So, you know, lion's mane may be good for like 20 different things, but whatever your body needs the most, it takes that first and then it's adaptive. It adapts to your body. It's pretty cool stuff. So that's what the mushroom water is about. I drink that a lot. And it tastes good too, especially like in a, in like a, a, a smoothie or something like that. It, you know, with some chocolate or something, it's amazing. What's with the Gibson LP and the, in the Zeppelin vids? That is my R8. So it is a reissue of a 1958 Les Paul, just down to every spec, except it's not $300,000. Yay, I get to keep my house. So that guitar I bought for like $2,200. It should have been $4,000. Greg Ellis spotted it in Guitar Center for me, my, my guitar tech, and said, hey, I got this guitar here. It looks amazing. It's what you're looking for. And uh, we brought it home. He took it apart and found out that it had a, a pair of $1,000 Tim White pickups in it, which Tim White is like the godfather of the PAF, of the modern day PAF. He winds these pickups to sound like 58s and 59s. And it had a pair of these in there, what? Yeah, and it had also been uh, professionally relicked, and so literally it was like a $4,000 guitar when I bought it for $2,200. That's the story behind that one. And I absolutely love that guitar. Hi, do you write any songs on YouTube or on an album? Georgia, I do. I've written probably 100 or so songs in my life. Nothing like my wife, who's probably written 2,000. She's a professional songwriter, but I've written a few. I haven't written in many years. I just don't have the time for it right now, but um, I've got a CD. I do have some stuff on YouTube. You could search Eric Andreas and then look for something that doesn't have to do with guitar lessons but has to do with music and you'll find some stuff. Uh, and then also, I had a small project, still have it, but I just, it's time, it's all time, uh, called Kirby, K-E-R-B-Y, Kirby and the Roaches. I know, it's a weird name, but it was a project that I did with my wife and we have a few things out there. We did some covers and then we did some originals too. What a Mess is, uh, w was one of those originals. You can look that up. But yeah, I have some stuff out there as well. Do I need to learn all the nine chords before I start learning riffs? No, not at all. Learn some riffs at the same time. Have fun at the guitar, friends. Don't paint yourself in, you know, don't box yourself in to thinking that you only have to do things a certain way, okay? There's many different ways that you can learn the guitar. Now, if you're doing my free course step by step, you're not gonna mess up that way. The only way to mess up is just be like, eh, I quit, which you're not gonna do, right? So that's the only way that you're gonna mess up doing that. But if you wanna learn a lick here and there or learn from somebody else, or whatever, that's great, do that. Have fun at playing guitar, but having a methodical step-by-step -step method is the way to keep you playing the game for sure, okay? Should I get Guitar Pro 6? I don't know what you're doing, Albert, but Guitar Pro is an amazing program. I use it all the time. It's great for tabs. It's great for writing, you know, tabs down, exercises, that sort of thing. So I love it. If, you know, it depends on what you're needing it for. If you're downloading tabs and doing those in, in real time and what have you, Guitar Pro is great. I love it, you know? Eric, can you explain consistency versus discouragement? You have been here uh, since YouTube started. Don't you ever get discouraged? The music industry is very different these days, always changing. Fantastic question, was Apple. Yes, so <clears throat> for me, I don't, to be quite blunt, I don't give a shit what the music industry is doing or if it's crashing or if it's burning or anything else. Like to me, it's just a thing. Um, I understand people have jobs, but 
the world's constantly changing. People are losing jobs to, to robots and everything else. We adapt. This is what we've done. If we were have had this mindset that things are changing and industries are going away, yeah, they're going away. They went away with the Industrial Revolution as well. And if we were sitting there behind a plow and a mule the whole time saying, damn it, those machines, well, then we wouldn't be very far, would we, in regards to progress in technology and those sorts of things. So, and so I don't get discouraged about that because like to me, I just focus on the things that I need to do. And yes, I have to deal with things like record companies literally coming after me or publishing companies coming after me for teaching a damn song. So I have to deal with that kind of stuff all the time. Dealing with small minds, it happens, you know, you, you run into stuff like that. But it's not so discouraging that I'm gonna stop. Hell no, there's nothing that they're gonna do to stop me. Um, so, you know, as far as consistency, uh, you know, you need to find out what it is that drives you. I love playing guitar, and it seems like as I've gotten older, I love to take what's in my mind, what's in my heart, and give it to others. So that's why I do so much teaching now, is because I truly just love doing that. I love playing too, very much so. But to me, to see that spark go on in a student and see them go, oh my God, I got it, light bulb moment. I got like four emails regarding those this morning inside of UGS. I love to get that because I get to relive all those the situations that I did as a kid where I where I learned something new and saw that light go on and it's so on so many levels music is so healing and so freeing and if I can guide somebody to a place where they're relieving their PTSD or they're able to sleep at night or they're able to lull their kid to sleep or they're able to go out and perform like they've always wanted to do or or live any one of their millions of dreams that are out there in regards to guitar God, I love that. That just, that's the thing that jazzes me and literally gets me emotional. So, uh, so I don't get discouraged about stuff like that. I mean, it's not to say that I don't get discouraged about, uh, you know, technology issues or what have you or anything like that. But, um, but yes, like anybody else, I definitely get discouraged, but less and less these days, because just it's the way that I direct my mind, I'm just like, I'm not going to get upset about that. I'm going to go out in the sun or hang out with my kid or, or quit for today or, or whatever. Go get a bite. So just like changing things up. This is stuff that I learned through Tony Robbins is, is just changing your state. My kid woke up from a nap the other day crying, right? My wife is just like, oh my God, what's wrong? He's crying, he's crying. And I'm like, I literally picked him up. I took him outside. I put him on a swing. Kid just was like elated, just smile from from ear to ear because I changed his state. And so many times we get so much inside of our head about like, oh my God, my job and my kids and my wife and this, 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 this. And we start going down this rabbit hole and all of a sudden we're picturing all this stuff. We don't realize that we're in this real alive world that we can step outside and go to a water park and this, that, and the other thing. It doesn't mean our problems will go away, but you will hold them in the right perspective, right? If, uh, if something, if you get a bad diagnosis or something like that, or what we refer to as a bad diagnosis, or you get, you get information that maybe you weren't prepared to get, well, it's information, you know, you're going to have to deal with it the way one would deal with it. But I was talking to a buddy the other day, it's like, you can go down that rabbit hole or lose your mind. You've seen people do this, right? Where they just absolutely lose their mind about something, whether it's road rage or, um, you know, death is a terrible, is, is, is not a fun thing. No, none of us like to deal with death, but I've seen some people handle death a certain way. I've seen some people just go and make life way harder for themselves because of it. So it's all about directing your mind. And, and I'm a big fan of learning how to direct your mind and, um, and so have a, have a beautiful life, you know? Okay, sweet. Great questions today here, my friends. Why do older rock metal guitarists seem to gravitate to blues later in their career? Larry is saying. Well, I think that probably has to do with like a maturity thing. You know, when you're, when it, like there's so much angst and like, yeah, look at me, yeah, type of thing in rock and metal. I grew up with that stuff. I still love it. But then again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of immature. Uh, so, you know, I think the reason that rock guitars a lot of times go to blues or some other sort of style is because it's like taking what they knew and the metal and stuff like that can get old. And so they're, not, they're like, okay, well now what, what can I do? And I think that, that uh, so much 
rock lends itself to blues, be, or I should say blues lends itself to rock. So a lot of rock solos are just blues based. And so that seems to be a good, um, a good progression. And then also they just relate to each other so well, you know? Uh, yeah, so great. All right, rumor of uh, all caps question mark if you would, my friends, that will help me to uh, zing through these a lot better. <clears throat> Okay, can you explain the theory behind why the F chord works in Freebird's rhythm progression in G? Seems it should be F diminished, but that is not what I hear on the track. Okay, so Earl, so let's talk about this because this is a great subject. A lot of you don't know this, some of you do, but there is a very definitive structure to music. Whether you know it or not has nothing to do with whether there's a real definitive structure to music, okay? Just like the planets spin in a certain way, certain rotation, certain, you know, times that everything, you know, scientists have this all plotted out. It's not random, but we can look and go, uh, oh, random, there's just shit everywhere, right? But we know better that that all this stuff is very defined, right? Music is the same way, and if you don't know these rules, this is the stuff that I teach you in the free program, right? As I'm teaching you based off of the major scale, which is what we call diatonic, or it's, it's diatonic as, as it's related to the major scale, diatonic harmony, has the chords are built and that sort of thing off of the major scale. So when we sing happy birthday to you, da 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 da, and we hear all these songs since we were a kid, what's happening is we are literally being programmed with the major scale. Every song that you hear, unless you're listening to some aboriginal music or atonal 12 tone type music, you are being exposed to diatonic harmony constantly. <gasps> you didn't know it, did you? Yeah, you are. You're being exposed to it all the time. And so why not take the next leap and actually learn the theory behind what it is that your ears already know, okay? If I put a rose under your nose and you're not looking at it, you're gonna smell it and you're gonna say, hmm, it smells like a rose. And you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a rose, right? Uh, so similarly, if we know some music theory and we understand, which is super simple, you know, basic music theory is simple. Uh, it's like addition. And if you can count to seven, you can know music theory. And so with that being said, you know, what Earl is saying here is that the chords in Freebird uh, should be, there should be an F diminished in there, okay? And so Earl is using music theory here because if we're playing in the key of G. And we have our scale that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, right? Or G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Well, each one of those notes has a chord related to it. And it goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Okay, so we have major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven, which is an F sharp. Diminished seven, F sharp, diminished seven, right? Which is what uh, our friend here is saying, okay? He's saying F or just F diminished, okay? Let's just say F diminished, okay? Okay, so that's the basic structure. In every major key, that is the gravitational pull, if you will, of the planets. And, but unlike the solar system, we can change that because this is art, what we're talking about right here. So there's a basic structure to music that is based off of math, that's based off of vibrations, that tells you that certain things sound more cohesive than others. You could say it's subjective, and to some degree, maybe part of it is, but there's literally some math that you could look at that would say, well, this chord sonically makes more sense harmonically because of the vibrations and the matching and the divisions of it and that sort of thing. We're not gonna get into all that, but essentially this major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished bit that I teach you in the free course, all right? So you don't have to know all this stuff, just get in the dang free course, okay? Um, so knowing those, knowing that, that basic structure, if we 
did it in any one of the 12 keys, it's the same. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished every single time, every single time, okay? So, but it's art. So at the end of the day, if we want to throw an F chord into there instead of an F diminished, we can do that. The reason, Earl, that that works here, now this is kind of going another step, right? The first step is it's art. We can do every, anything to hell that we want, right? Listen to Alanis Morissette and some of the chord progressions she did or listen to Radiohead or listen to any number of folks that were experimenting with tonalities and har harmony and that sort of thing. You do anything that you want. And if you hear it enough times, you start going, hmm, well now I kind of like that. For the same reason, if I played children's nursery rhymes for you, you might say, well, that's boring. But when you were a little kid, you loved them. But what happened was you graduated. You also just liked bananas and avocado like my kid does now. And then later on, you liked hot sauce and you liked onions and you liked, you know, cayenne pepper and stuff like that because you graduated in your taste buds. So same thing with music. We can, we can think very elementary, which is nothing wrong with it. There's a, all the great songs are written from just those chords that are in the diatonic structure that I just mentioned to you. But it's art, and we can change it any time that we want. So in this case here, uh, let's go another step, which the first step is it's art. We can do anything that we want. We could literally pull any chord out of our butt and put it there, and eventually, if you hear it enough times, you're gonna, be, you're gonna accept it, right? Just like if you were looking at a painting with a pink sun, you're gonna be like, what the frick? It's a pink sun. But eventually, you just it's a picture. And yeah, he has a pink sun. I don't understand why it's there, but it's there. That sort of thing. Um, so that's number one. Number two is why that F major works is in the key of G, there's a couple keys that are very closely related to the key of G. And what we mean by this is they're very closely related in their, the notes that are involved. So the key of G and the key of C are very similar. The key of G and the key of D are very similar. G and C are, are probably the, gonna be the closest two easy keys that you can play in. I say probably, 100% they are. The key of G is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Basically, no sharps or flats except for the F. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So all natural except for that F. But if we're playing in the key of C, we have C, A, B, D, E, F, I'm sorry, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to C. And if we take both of those sets of notes and we mash them together, we'll find that there's only one note that doesn't agree. The F, F sharp, it's either F or the F sharp. So there's only one note that's, that varies between those two keys. Because of that, <clears throat> C, and by the way, you can do this for every key. The circle of fifths will help you with that. I teach that inside UGS. But essentially for every key, there's at least one other key, but really two keys that relate to that key that are so closely related that it's very easy to grab chords out of that other key. It's called borrowing, key borrowing or, or chord borrowing. And you're literally borrowing a chord out of that key uh, because it, it, it essentially becomes a, for a moment, it becomes a, a temporary key change. So there's something in your ear, Earl, or theory-wise that says that's not right, right? Uh, but but it's work, it works, it's freaking free bird, right? It works. But the F chord comes straight out of the, the C major chord progression. So we have C, D minor, E minor, F. So G and C are so related that what they did is they grabbed that F. It's also known as the flat seven chord because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So if, if that's our one, the G, and here's our seven, which is an F sharp, then the flat seven would be a, an F. I know some of this stuff is going way past you too fast or over your head. It's okay, everybody's at a different place on this continuum. Start at the free course, my friends. All the all the, the fog will clear. Trust me. But that is the short answer, or all for why that chord works. Sorry, that was a bit long, but uh, that was a great question. So I figured I'd delve down there. Do I play any Elvis songs? Yes. On YouTube, search your guitar sage Elvis, or if you're into Clash, Clash, search your guitar sage Clash. Whatever you're looking for, search your guitar sage, and then the name of your artist, and you're gonna find it. I've got lots of Elvis songs. Friggin' love Elvis. Okay. 
Uh, Ron is saying, CBD has been tremendous for me. It has for me as well, my friend. I love it. Okay, hey Eric. Um, okay, let's see. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm skipping down to the bottom here because I. I went a little too long on that one. I apologize. <clears throat> oh, beautiful. Okay, Chris. Uh, uh, Christine is saying thank you for the live lessons yesterday and today. You give me a number of epiphanies. Beautiful. Love it. <clears throat> okay. Okay, here we go, Mary Beth. Hey, Eric, uh, thank you for fixing my Fender Blues Jr. amp yesterday. I just tapped on the box and now my reverb works and it sounds awesome. Now, ESP, beautiful. Uh, with my Line 6 M5, the pride of Texas. Yeah, beautiful, Mary Beth. So, Mary Beth had a problem with her reverb tank in her, in her Fender Blues Jr. You know I'm a big fan of the Fender Blues Jr. because it's a 12-inch speaker. It's got everything that you need. It's got 12 inch speaker, so you get all that bass response, all those nice mids. It's got tubes. It's made by Fender. It's loud because I think it's 12 or 18 watts, which for, for tube is very loud. Not as loud as 100 tube watts, but um, you can't compare solid state to tube. You have an 18 watt solid state amp compared to an 18 watt tube, that tube's gonna blow it out of the water. You won't even be able to play with a band with an 18 watt solid state. You could play with a very loud band uh, with an 18 watt tube amp. Pretty cool, right? So anyhow, her reverb tank, which is at the bottom, went out. She didn't have reverb anymore. And so um, I said, if you tap on it, sometimes you can do that. You tap on your reverb tank and it just needs a little, a little push. And all of a sudden it works, so pretty cool, right? Okay, would you please remind us what is that DJ stuff you've talked about? Okay, so let me see, actually, let me, let me pull this up. And Mike, if we have, Dude. If, let, me, let me see here, let me, I'm, I may have, shoot, I gotta log into Spotify and all that, and that's gonna take a while, so um, let's forget about that. Okay, so, let me, let me see, I may have something else I can show them. No, I don't. Okay, so, sorry, I take that back. I'm not gonna show you that. Uh, I was gonna show you DJ2, but I'm not gonna do that. So, here, it's called DJ2. I'll, I'll show it to you at some point. I've done it many times in these programs before where I share my screen with you. But essentially, it's called DJ2. It lets you slow songs down and, and without changing the pitch. So you could take the fastest solos out there. You could reduce them to a quarter of their speed, which is super slow. Trust me, that doesn't sound like that's slow, it's super slow, and you literally keep it in the same pitch. It's crazy. DJ2, so D-J-A-Y, numeral two, all smushed together on iOS devices, probably available for Android as well, and on the computer, it's DJ Pro. At least on my Apple it is, and I freaking love those programs, I use them all the time. Affordable, super cool, uh, I love it. Thank you for the kind words, Jason. Uh, appreciate that. All right, good. <clears throat> so, someone, uh, Brian's asking, is there a quick way that you can tell us for figuring out the minor version of the same major scale? Beautiful question. Get ready to have your mind blown because if you know, this is, this is the, friends, this is the stuff that makes Music theory is so exciting. People are like, I don't want to learn music theory. It'll ruin me as a musician. Yeah, and showering will ruin you as a, I don't know, as a human being, you know, and reading's gonna ruin you, and getting good at anything's gonna ruin you. Come on, stop that. It's ridiculous. Uh, there's tons of musicians who say they don't know music theory. They know music theory. They're literally that dense. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. But they literally don't know that they don't know. But it's kind of a dense thing because when I hear people brag that they don't know music theory, you know it. Otherwise, here, here's how I know you know music theory. Watch this. If I go to your guitar and I tune it, I'll tune it in tune, so each string will be in tune, but not E, A, D, G, B, E. I'm gonna pick my own tuning, because remember, you don't know music theory, you play entirely by ear. Now I'm gonna hand the guitar to you, and you're gonna be able to play everything as normal. Chords, scales, fretting, everything else. Eric, that's ridiculous. Okay, then 
what you know is you know patterns on the guitar, whether that's chords, scales, riffs, anything else. You know this, whether you have them memorized or whether you know the music theory behind it. So welcome, my friend. You already know some music theory because you know the patterns. The unfortunate thing is, if you're one of those folks who think that music theory is dumb or it's gonna ruin you as a musician, yada yada bullshit, then what's happening is, is that you don't have the labels to help get you from here to get you up here, okay? Learn the labels, it's super easy stuff. I don't mean to beat you, but I promise you, I'm trying to get you to understand that you gotta know this stuff if you wanna become a better player, if you wanna have a better understanding of the guitar and not be like, well, I don't know what to play. You know, you don't wanna be that guy, don't be that guy, okay? So, uh, geez, how did I get off on that preaching? Oh, so, so here you go. So this is why music theory is so amazing, is because if I say to you, if I show you one scale that equates to 24 scales, would you get excited? And you would say, well, yeah, I would. So here's the deal, watch this. This is how cool music theory is. Is if I take this scale and I play, this is G major, by the way. This is in the free course. So I'm not gonna give you the tabs or anything like that. Just download, just go to the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. This is G major, watch. Okay. So we have two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. Those are the fingers, right? Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, okay? And, this is available in the free course, so I've got the diagrams there for you. Now, why is this powerful? Watch this. This turns into 12, 12 scales very easily. So we just move it up a half step. Now we have G sharp. Same fingering. A. A sharp. B. C. C sharp. D. Etc. Every single time we move it up, we move it to a different key. That's 12 keys, right? 12 scales. Now, what was asked is, how can we take, how can we figure out the minor version of the same major scale? Brian's asking, so watch this. If you play the scale from one to one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, then you have the major scale, right? It's the major scale played from one to one, it's the major scale. If you play the major scale from six to six, it becomes the minor scale. Same notes, nothing's changed, okay? So, watch this. Here we go, here's one. Now we're gonna go down three half steps. So we're gonna go down to the F sharp, F, and we're at the E. So basically, down three half steps. That is your six, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, which is an E, seven, one. One, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Watch this, seven, six. So now I'm gonna play the same scale, but I'm gonna start on six. Watch this, and I'm gonna end on six. So six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I just didn't finish it out. Seven, one. So let me do that again. Watch this. Here's a major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. One, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. But instead of starting on the one, I'm gonna start on the six. So I'm gonna go one, seven, six. So here's six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that, my friends, is the minor scale. So we can play it all over the neck, but essentially that's how you, and then you can take that scale, obviously, and you can move it up and down the fretboard, and now you have 12 more scales, so that one scale turns into 24 very easily. If you know what notes to take out for the pentatonic, well now you have another 24 scales. Yeah, pretty cool. You know the major, you know the minor, you know major pentatonic, you know minor pentatonic. If you add the blue note, you have all the major blues and all the minor blues. So that's like another, you know, what's that? 24, 48, it's a lot, okay? Somewhere around a lot. And then that's just one form of those scales. You know, for most forms, you've got anywhere from like, for more, most scales, you have between five and seven different forms. So now you're multiplying five, five to seven times that 
you know, whatever number that was, I gotta figure out what number that is. So 24, 62, is that right? No, 72. Yeah, 72 times five to seven different forms. It's like, it's really easy to know your scales, you know? If you sit there and you memorize them all, well, hell, that's hard. I would never tell you to do that. But if you learn the methods, the way that I teach you in the free program, in these videos on YouTube, inside UGS and all the rest, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about. If anybody is in UGS, shout amen and let folks know what I'm talking about here if, if, um, if you've seen the light, if you've been illuminated on, in some of these subjects, right? Uh, and you can literally get started today for free, friends, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, okay? Why did I create that, Eric? I get that question all the time. Why did I create that free course? Like, why don't I charge for it? Because for the same reason that I've got like a thousand something videos on YouTube is that originally I started this to give back, to just be like, you know, I would sit there and I teach 70 something lessons a week here in Nashville and I teach the same Taylor Swift song five times that week and I'd say, yeah, I got this video camera and there's this crazy new thing called YouTube. Why don't I just throw a video up to there? And then I would do that and then people would learn how to play a Taylor Swift song in Australia or whatever. And I thought that was just cool. And it was nice to give back, to, to literally be able to say, here's information out of my heart, out of my head, and here you go. And that's how I got started on this and I still continue to do that. That's why I give so much away. That's why we do the free courses and the, the, the guitar giveaways and everything else. It's just part of it and it's pretty cool. Thank you, Mary Beth, Larry, Brad, Kelly. Beautiful, thanks so much. Uh, Brian, good, glad that worked for you. Glad you, you understood that. Beautiful, thank you for letting me know that. Yeah, learn theory and become a true guitar Jedi. It's true. Oh, here you go. Uh, Just Chico is saying you can slow it down without changing the pitch using Audacity on the PC. I've heard of Audacity. I don't know how user-friendly it is. It may be super user-friendly, but Audacity, there you go. In This is in the YouTube chat. Audacity is A-U-D-A city, okay? And it's free, he's saying. Pretty cool. Is it worth it to buy a good guitar as an intermediate player? That's a subjective question, but I'll answer it for you. What I think is yes. If you have the money to do it and it makes you play more, then definitely do it. You should have a good guitar anyhow, if you can afford one. If you can't afford one, you can't afford one. Just get a beater, and I did that for years. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's good, it's the gauntlet. It'll prove whether you're really in it or you just need a special guitar in order to play. You know, the gauntlet's important. It's like, what are you willing to do to become the person who you ain't yet, okay? <laughs> Is there a quick tip that you can tell us for figuring out the minor version? We did that one, right? Okay, sorry, my bad, Brian. Okay, uh, <clears throat> okay, freaking amen, AJ, AJ thank you, uh, GW, beautiful, thank you, Kelly, thank you. Thank you so much for the folks that are in there, okay. The minor scale is actually a mode based on the sixth scale degree of the major scale. It's called Aeolian. In, it, it, that is true. And also, Michael, the major scale is called, is, is, a, is the first degree of the modes, and it's called the Ionian mode. So yes, what Michael's saying here is correct. The minor scale, if you're scared of modes and you know the major scale, well, guess what? You already know two modes because the major scale is the Ionian mode, and if you play it from six to six, you have the Aeolian, okay, or the natural minor scale. If you play it from two to two, you have the Dorian, and then there's Lydian, Phrygian, uh, Lydian, Mixolydian, uh, Phrygian, uh, all sorts of fun Greek words there for you. Okay, beautiful. All right, we're gonna go another 12 minutes, my friend, uh, my friends. I'm gonna bump over to. Facebook here really quickly and just make sure there's no questions there that are unattended and then I'll bump back over to YouTube. Great questions today. You guys are playing full out today. Love it. <clears throat> I'm gonna work backwards on this one, okay? So I'm on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Thank you for the kind words on Facebook for those that are in UGS. Okay, nice. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of success with, with Craigslist 
in not not Facebook Marketplace, but I've had lots of success with Craigslist. Not so much pawn shops. Somebody's asking, um, but but with Craigslist, here's the deal: you typically get. I don't buy stuff unless I'm getting it for about half off of what I would pay for it in the store. Uh, but you you know you got to try it out. You got to use your common sense. Use your blink. Right? Have you ever read that book, Blink, which tells you about using your gut instinct on if someone seems like a cheat the first second that you meet them, then just be wary of that. They may not be, but it'd be something to, to investigate. If you think that you're buying something from somebody who may not be sincere, then it's good to do that, you know? Okay, thanks for the live lessons. How do I know when I need to start personal lessons? Okay, so here's my take on personal lessons, and I have a, a video for this, actually. It's, it's something along the lines of, you don't need a guitar teacher. And basically that was, or I think it was, you don't need, you don't need a guitar teacher or something like that. But basically I was referring to, you know, guitar of any sort, online or otherwise. And uh, basically what I meant by that is <coughs> Robert Johnson, I don't think had a guitar teacher. I don't know if Jimi Hendrix did or some of the old, old timers did, but nonetheless, they were pretty good and they got away with not having to have guitar teachers and they still learned the guitar. Right? So you don't necessarily need a guitar teacher, but like any good coach, it will typically help uh, quicken your process, right? So, how do, so my thought is this on personal lessons. I taught personal, I've taught literally thousands, not joking, thousands of personal lessons over decades. Uh, and I love teaching one-on-one, -on -one, and I feel like it's a great way to really get what's in your mind into the student in the most efficient way possible if money was not money and time wasn't an option, specifically money, because inside for for what I charge, which I charge two hundred dollars an hour for for personal lessons, literally if you took a two hour lesson from me, this gentleman came the other day, he did an hour and a half. Uh, if we had done a two hour lesson, he could have a lifetime of lessons inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Same dude teaching with the same concepts, the same analogies, the same guitars and amps and everything else, except you get to go take lessons whenever you want and you get way more than two hours worth of lessons. So that's my thought on personal lessons. I think personal lessons are good. I'm not knocking them at all. I still teach them. But like with this gentleman that was coming to visit me, I said, buddy, you're inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. What am I gonna show you personally that I haven't already showed you inside the system? He said, man, I just really want to meet you. I really wanna be here in Nashville and I want that experience and everything else. And so I think it would be well worth it. I said, okay, well, if we're gonna do it, please tell me what it is that you feel you're doing good at and then tell me what it is you don't feel you're doing good at. And he sent me an email, very detailed, and it was a well worth, uh, a very, well worth uh, paid lesson. It was a $300 lesson, but I really feel like he got at least $300 worth out of it because we got him to new levels. Now, could he have gotten all that same information inside UGS? Yep, all the same exact information. Uh, it's just that he was working with me. We were able to get to the end quicker. So that's what a, a good teacher, and that's really important. There's a ton of hacks out there, a ton of people who are teaching that don't wanna be teaching. I friggin' love teaching, okay? Um, maybe at this point even more so than playing out. Uh, it's just, it's been changing over the years. I love helping people out. I just love it. Uh, so for me, I love teaching. If you can find a good teacher who loves teaching and is, and is going to guide you there and you can afford it and the time and all that stuff and the schedule works out, then you're ready for personal lessons. Otherwise, you can do just about the same thing for a lot cheaper buying different courses. You know, if you want to learn from five different people, you could do it. Ten different people for a lot cheaper than you could taking one-on-one -on -one lessons. But that's just my two cents worth. And obviously, I believe in both. There's a place for it. And, but you have to be the one to determine that. Okay. Thanks for the kind words, Ryan, uh, about UGS. Love it. Beautiful. Okay. All right, <clears throat> just going through these here on Facebook and then I'll pop back over to YouTube real quick. Again, all caps, question mark, will help everything a lot quicker for me. It'll help me get to your questions quicker and then I can get to other folks quicker. Okay, oh, thanks for posting those links, Amber and Scott, uh, to the kit store, beautiful, thanks. Okay. 
Amber is saying nerves on playing live. I have practice and practice. I know the songs we are playing, but tips on dealing with nerves, please. Okay, let me tell you what just works for me, okay? I'm not an alcoholic, so I have a drink before I go up because I found that it works really, really quickly. If I was an alcoholic or had some, you know, if, if, I, if I had an addictive personality, I wouldn't do that. So don't do that if you have an addictive personality, okay? But if you don't and you hate alcohol like I do, I just, I can't stand it. I, I'll have a cocktail every now and then. But if I'm gonna step on stage, to me, I find one beer, especially on an empty stomach, is exactly what the doctor ordered for me to just not give a shit, <laughs> to get up out on stage. And what I mean by that is, if you've practiced, you're gonna be as good as you are that day. It doesn't matter if you worry about it or not. In fact, worrying about it's gonna make you worse, but you're only as good as you are up to the practice and then now it's the gig. So now it's go time. There's no time to step off stage. So you need to have fun and you need to give your best performance. And to me, if you are a little bit like, whatever, if I mess up, I mess up. I'm not gonna try to mess up and I'm gonna try to do my best. I'm going to do my best. But if I mess up, I mess up. It's a good attitude to have because bottom line, no one really cares if you mess up, okay? They don't want you to look at the guitar and go, I messed up, let me try that again and then do it again and you mess up and again you mess up and now you're crying and you run off stage and they can hear you crying in the background. That's what they don't want. If you mess up, that's okay. People forgive that and you keep going, okay? So Amber, just understand that no one really cares whether you mess up or not. No one's out there to crucify you or to, you know, and if they are, they're a jerk anyhow and they don't need to be there. Uh, they're a loser, so that'll just show, show you who's the loser in the crowd if they care about you messing up. Uh, so don't care. If you can have a beer, great, have a beer. Also, what I find is the first mistake that I make, because I'm gonna make a mistake, uh, the first mistake that I make is always the thing that makes me feel better, because I'm like, ah. And I think that might have to do with the fact that I'm think somewhere in the back of my mind, I think I'm gonna have a flawless show, and then once I don't, I'm like, okay, well, the pressure's off. I messed up, no big deal, you know? So those are the couple things that I would say <clears throat> to do to make you chill out. Also, CBD oil is, is really good for just chilling out. It doesn't get you high, it just makes you really chill, and it makes you just be like, it's all good. Not sedated chill, but literally like calm chill, where you're just like, I've got this, I'm fine. Which brand of USB interface do you recommend? So I have a couple of them, um, a Scarlett, Focusrite Scarlett. I have several of those. And then I also have a Line 6 Sonic port. And I believe that you can find those inside the kit store, kit.com slash your guitar stage. I think we have a few of them there, actually, but that's, that's where you would wanna go, okay? Cool, all right. We got like three minutes, so I got to all those questions there on Facebook. Well, let's get to the last questions here on YouTube, <clears throat> okay? Oh yeah, sharing is caring, my friends. Uh, James is saying here, please, let's take this moment right now and share this with others. Why? Because sharing is caring and because just in the same way that I'm sharing with you here, my knowledge, it would be helpful if you could share it with other people because that will let them know what we're doing here and that we're literally here for an hour and a half answering questions every Tuesday, trying to help people move forward in their craft, okay? So please do that if you're on Instagram, do that, Facebook, uh, all that good stuff, <clears throat> okay? Email it to a friend if you don't know how to, sh how to share, okay? How to build a good sense of music? Well, you start where everybody starts, which is step one, right? And you grow from there. That's the, that's the 30,000 foot view version of it. If you haven't been through the first 30 lessons, I can't help you because that is literally me giving you a good thousand dollars worth of my time if we were to meet one-on-one. -on -one. If you don't take advantage of that, you're not serious about music. I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm saying people ask me this all the time. I say all the time to get the free program <clears throat> but if they're asking how to get a good sense of music, I'm not saying that's you, but if you're saying this, well, how do I do this? I need an easier way to do it. You're not cut out for music. You need to just play the radio or play TV because you're not cut out, if you're not dedicated to, to put some time in. I'm not being a jerk here, I'm being honest. And if that's being a jerk, then I'm a big fat jerk, okay? I'm just being honest with you. You really need to dedicate some time where to do that? In the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. That's how to get a good sense of music and to do it for free. 
And then, I mean, there's tons of stuff that you can get into. Get in another program, either paid program or free. <clears throat> the, the stuff with paid programs is, is that you're gonna get to what it is that you're trying to get to a lot quicker than jumping around on YouTube with ads and being redirected here and finding this guy doesn't teach right and that guy does and this, that, and the other thing, okay? Okay. <clears throat> All right, good. Let's do like maybe one more question and then... Oh, beautiful. Personal lessons would slow me down. Online with Eric as fast as Buzz Lightyear. Love it. Thank you. I'm very familiar with Buzz Lightyear because I have a little boy who's three years old and my gosh, we watch lots of Toy Story. Can I get to one more? Do we have one more question? <clears throat> I'm playing with some friends in a band and most of them don't really know music theory. It's tough, isn't it, right? Because you can't talk about this. You can't say, hey, no, dude, make that a seventh chord or make that a ninth chord or whatever. You can't do that. You can't talk. And they're musicians in a band. They should be able to talk the talk, right? It's quite difficult to communicate, but they say, but they say you need to feel it. Is feeling it good enough? That's a lazy ass statement. You need to feel it. That means I'm too lazy to learn, is what that means. You're feeling it fine, okay? But if you say to them, that's great, that's great, but the feeling of your diminished chord in Freebird is wrong because it should be an F chord and they don't know how to do that, then shame on them. It has nothing to do with feeling. You can feel all day long, but if I tell you to play a friggin' G chord and you don't know where the G chord's at, you can feel your way around the fretboard and waste my time and waste your time, or you can know where the G is at and go to it directly. So feel, of course, feels important, right? Um, it's important to feel at anything when you're doing art, but knowing what colors work well together, right? It's like, um, Mike and Chris, they're doing stuff in the studio here all the time and they have a good sense for feel and lighting and stuff. But when you learn something new from somebody who knows something maybe more than you, well now all of a sudden that ramps you up. And if you're waiting to just feel everything, then you're gonna be a mediocre musician. I've played in bands with folks like this and it's just very, very trying. And I've quit many bands like that because it was so trying and it was so boring because we just weren't moving quick enough, okay? No music theory, don't be that guy, okay? Um, all right, that's it, my friends. We could keep going. I know the questions will keep going, but this has been great, especially since we've, it's been a while since we've been online. So thank you, my friends, so much for joining me here. Please share this again. We are gonna be online next week for another live broadcast, I'm pretty sure. Let me look at the date here. Um, yeah, we are. We're up for, for being online next week. The following week, we, we, I don't believe we will be, but you're gonna see announcements about that, all that. And the new studio, you're gonna see lots of stuff about that. Friends, if you do one thing today and you haven't done it already, get in the Unstoppable Guitar System. You can do it for free today. Yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Don't be like, oh, I'm gonna do it later. Do it now, it's free, so it doesn't cost you anything, so it's not gonna cost you anything later when you're gonna forget. Join it now. The link for it's in the description of the video. It's also right here, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It's the top 30 lessons I teach all my students. I promise you, you're gonna learn so much music theory. You're gonna learn so much technique. And for folks that have been playing 30, 40 years, I've had them get in this and say, I am learning stuff that I never learned. My guitar teacher never taught it to me. Why do I know it? Because I've just always been just obsessed with breaking things down and hacking things and making it very simple. It's just the way that my mind works. I think I found what, what I do best, and I think it may be that. Uh, I do other things good as well, but that's the main thing. All right, friends, let's get in there right now and, uh, and hit me up when you're in there. Say, you know, hello to me in there, and I answer these questions all the time. That's what I'm gonna do right now as soon as we're done here. All right, my friends, love you guys so much. You guys play full out. I will see you soon. <laughs>